Hello everyone. As you've seen from the intro, I have made a rough representation of the crystal structure of a specific compound, and trust me, it was a very difficult task. I'll reveal to you in the process in a bit, but first, let's take a quick look at the compound itself. And at the end, maybe you'll understand why, as to why this structure is not easy to pull off and not easy to build. And maybe, maybe we can learn something off of it. The compound that we'll be using is tin oxide. Now there are two different types of tin oxide depending on how much oxygen is in the compound. Over here is status tin oxide or SNO and the other one over here is static tin 4 oxide SNO2. But we'll focus only on status oxide and refer to it as tin 2 oxide for the rest of the video. Tin 2 oxide unlike its latter type which is white, is an inorganic crystalline solid, either as a brownish black powder or as a blue black crystalline solid. From the name of the compound itself, you can tell that it is already a metal oxide. This compound can be found naturally in mineral bromarchite, but it's extremely rare, so usually this compound is made synthetically. It has a molecular weight of 134.71 grams per mole with a relatively high density at 6.45 grams per cubic centimeter. However, one thing to note is that it is insoluble in water and in alcohol, but it is soluble to strong acids like sulfuric acid to make a colorless solution. Tin 2 oxide is also known as a semiconductor. The dominant use of it is as a precursor in manufacturing of other, typically divalent tin compounds or salts. Tin oxide may also be employed as a reducing agent and in the creation of ruby glass, fun fact. It is also worth mentioning that tin 2 oxide melts at 1080 degrees Celsius, which means this melts faster than the latter one that we introduced earlier, tin 4 oxide. Now let's proceed with the crystal structure. Tin 2 oxide has a tetragonal crystalline structure like this one, like this one over here which is common with other metal oxides. It is worth mentioning that it is slightly different from the one that we also know as well, which is the body-centered tetragonal crystalline structure. We'll get to see the difference of that once the crystalline structure that we made is already finished. At its essential form, the lattice is measured at both A and B, both sides, at 3.871 angstrom. And the other side, which is C, is at 5.025 angstrom in which all angles are equal to 90 degrees. Same with the usual characteristics of a simple tetragonal crystalline structure. Tin 2 oxide has a coordination number of 4, 1 SN atom for tin, and 3 coordinated oxygen atoms. Tin 2 oxide has an atomic packing factor of less than 52% and has a volume of 75 or 285 cubic angstrom. Unfortunately for this compound, as well as other basic tetragonal crystals, they do not have a packing structure nor have a packing density. Although basic tetragonal structures do classify itself as a hexagonal close pack structure in a special case, for this case, tin 2 oxide does not classify as one of those. Maybe it's because that it is loosely packed, that's why it doesn't have its known packing density. With all that being said, let's get started on making the tetragonal structure right away. So for the materials that I will use for making the tin 2 oxide structure, so uh, for the atoms itself, I'll be using clay. And then to hold that structure, we'll be using barbecue sticks. And then to cut it to the right length of each, I'll be using either the scissors and the cutter. And then a ruler, of course, to measure it each. Make sure that every single length for A, B, and C on the crystal structure would be equal uh, based on the requirements, which is the simple tetragonal structure. So it is very difficult, I know, but, but we'll try our best to do it. So let's get into a time lapse and then we'll do, we'll just see how it will go. The bills need paying and the block. 
Parks need place and gotta work, work, work all day. structure it may not look perfect but here it is in all its glory <laughs> it's not straight it's not as straight and it's crooked because it has been gone for a couple of hours before recording so things may have looked perfect but um, I made that cinematic um, as you can see right now it looks really really good um, I can't satisfy it can't satisfy what I'm doing mainly because there were so many challenges behind First of all, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from me of understanding the structure itself. Not just the structure, the crystal structure, but the thing that I learned the most is how the element was structured itself. How come tin oxide is structured like this? You know, usually you have common crystal structures like a simple cubic, a face centered cubic, a body centered cubic. And there's a reason why I did not choose any uh, any oxide, metal oxide or salt or any pure substance that encompasses uh, a cubic structure because it kind of ruins the difficulty. You are meant to be challenged and to learn on one of the mo one of some of difficult uh, structures to make. And simple tetragonal structure does not look simple. First challenge right off the bat is how it looks. As you can see from this structure, if you look at it close attention, it's not the usual uh, face center cubic or visor cubic where it's just three things you have to put into. Like you have a, it's either for a body center cubic, more or less, it's one big um, atom at the center of the structure. Or for a face center cubic, it's more or less all sides. This is different. This is very, very different in the sense that you have not just four tin atoms that are very far apart from each other, which is here. It is also positioned different, which is very difficult in and of itself. Now, the second challenge on this has to be how to build it, not going to lie. As you have seen in the time lapse, I did experience multiple difficulties assembling this thing. Just from the foundation alone, it was very, very difficult. We resorted to using glue gun um, and a lot of outmaneuvering things so that we can at least get it to stand. And it makes sense considering the fact that simple tetragonal structures do not become stable as a structure if one of them is misaligned. And that's what I've understood is that you have to get the angles right. You have to get the sides precise and accurate. Because let's say for example this one in the middle here. So it although in the text in, in several references that I have searched, there were no specific measurements for each. So basically you're here to estimate you're left alone to estimate or to accurately at least measure on the um, uh, on the uh, actual size or the actual length. Sorry, 
length of the stick itself so that not just for it to make it uh, stabilize so that the middle atom can stand without any support but as well as to make sure that they look neat and it's difficult in itself. Symmetry is a challenge especially with this structure. Simple tetrachloral structure and I learned a lot to be honest. I learned a lot um, and it's more or less about patience. You know I've spent the whole day one whole day dedicating on making the structure alone and I have to say I am very proud of it. Um, if there is one thing I hope to at least gain a little bit of reference is the actual side actual lengths of not just of the just the body of the tetragonal structure but also the lengths of these ones the ones inner so the, the lengths attaching from the uh, oxygen towards the tin atom we don't know the values of each and we're basing on the fact that it is on the unit of angstrom and so we're trying our best to convert that into centimeters and so that we can at least try to uh, replicate it in the most accurate way possible and in my opinion if i'm being honest this isn't an accurate representation because first and foremost this isn't long it should have been a little bit shorter but based on the references that we were given it gave us a little bit of hard time for us to convert that and to give us a little bit of a realistic picture especially with thin oxide which is still recently researched in terms of its crystal structure and that we don't know the full detail of and there you go guys that is my entire structure this is SNO stannous oxide tin to oxide I have been, I made it in real life and I'll be keeping this because this is this is well worth one full day of just making this work and this is challenging I would dare anyone to do a simple tetragonal structure it doesn't look simple but this was a challenge that I was willing to take and I am more than impressed with it I'm more than impressed with it hope you guys enjoy the video and I'll see you next time